our dreams can say a lot about us. They can be manifestations of our stress, our innermost desires, or our completely rational fear of being chased by a man made of scissors while the ground slowly turns into quicksand. But they always feel real while we're in them. Sometimes a bit too real. The reveal that an entire work of fiction was nothing more than a dream seems like quite the cliche, but an idea only becomes a cliche if it works at least once, and if it works once, then it can always work again. As such, it's turned up in a number of games, occasionally as part of the basic premise, but more often a shocking plot twist at the end. That said, a fair warning that while there are no men made of scissors on this list, that we know of, we will be discussing endgame plot details, so a spoiler warning is in effect for all the games you see on screen right now. So if you're still here, I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games that were just a dream, or were they? Number 10, Monster Party. One of the most frequently experienced kinds of recurring nightmares are the ones where you feel like you're being chased by some sort of terrifying monster nipping right at your heels. You dare not turn around to see what it could be. Dracula, Frankenstein, a fried prawn, Royce? These are but a few of the horrors players must face in Monster Party, a bizarre platformer game for the NES about a young boy named Mark, who gets whisked away by a gargoyle called Bert to save the dark world from evil. As one does, I suppose. After overcoming all the monsters in his way, Mark returns home with a gift from the grateful Bert. Inside the box is a beautiful princess to presumably reward Mark with a kiss, but instead turns into a ghoul and melts all the skin off of his body. But it's okay, because the whole thing was just a dream. I'm sure the experience won't leave any psychological scars at all. Monster Party is considered something of a historical oddity among the retro gaming community for its interesting localization history. Many of its unusual enemies were actually originally copyright infringing parodies of licensed horror characters. And now you know. Number 9 Eternal Sonata I've often wondered what it would be like to live inside the mind of a creative genius, what kind of amazing worlds and fabulous ideas dwell within. Eternal Sonata provides us a glimpse, and it's frankly not what I expected. To say that the premise of Eternal Sonata is a bit odd would be an understatement. It follows the adventures of legendary Polish composer Frederick Chopin, as he and his party of companions set out to stop a war between the music-themed kingdoms of Forte and Baroque. It's pretty standard fare for a JRPG, but the twist here is the entire adventure takes place within Chopin's imagination as he lies in his bed, or more specifically, as he lies on his deathbed while he's dying from tuberculosis. Christ, that got dark. Eternal Sonata is actually something of a biographical video game, as the events that take place in this fantasy world are based on those of Chopin's actual life, both tragedies and triumphs alike, and we are, in a sense, seeing his life flash before his eyes during his final nights on Earth. Rest in peace, Chopin. Wherever you are, now, I hope there's less level grinding involved. Number 8. Record of Lotus War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. Dungeons and Dragons is a pretty hot commodity these days. With all the books, podcasts, movies, and merchandise, you almost forget there's a tabletop game buried at the centre of it all. But this mass appeal actually stretches across decades and national borders. In the 80s, Japanese author Ryo Mitsuno adapted transcripts of his own D&D sessions into a series of novels called Records of Lotus War, which spun off into a massive media franchise of its own. Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth is a delightful little Metroidvania game that stars the series as elven heroine Deedlit, as she explores a mysterious dungeon filled with figures from her past, including enemies and allies long since deceased. At the heart of the labyrinth lurks Nahil, an evil spirit that feeds on feelings of sorrow and loss, and has targeted Deedlit as its next prey, trapping her inside her own mind to feast on the grief that she feels from the loss of her friends. By defeating Nahil, Deedlit is able to escape the labyrinth, come to terms with her loss, and find the strength to move forward from her life, probably saved her a bundle on therapy sessions to boot. Number 7. Hellblade – Senua's Sacrifice Video games are unlike any other storytelling medium due to the way they make the audience, that being the player, a part of the experience rather than just letting them be a passive observer. And over the years, we've seen this put to use by some truly marvellous games that broke new ground in storytelling. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice casts the player in the role of Senua, a picked woman who journeys to the afterlife to reclaim the soul of her dead lover, but finds her path obstructed by monsters, puzzles, and mysterious illusions. Senua is also plagued by malicious spirits who manifest as voices 
voices in her head, occasionally offering her guidance but just as often trying to lead her astray. The twist of Hellblade is that Senua's delusions are actually due to her struggle with psychosis, a condition that was not well understood in the Middle Ages to say the least, and the game leaves it largely ambiguous to what extent Senua's foes are just hallucinations or something truly supernatural. Mental illness is a very serious issue, and the developers of Hellblade went to great lengths to ensure their depiction of Senua's condition was as authentic and respectful as possible, by consulting doctors and patients of psychosis about their experience. Good on them. Number 6. Metal Gear Solid 2 – Sons of Liberty on its surface, one could be forgiven for assuming that Metal Gear Solid is nothing more than a straightforward bit of military fiction. But lest we forget, this is also the series where ghosts, psychic powers, and Santa Claus are all assumed to exist. So really, the sky's the limit when it comes to strangeness. Metal Gear Solid 2 assumes Solid Snake to focus on a new protagonist, Raiden, who's on a mission to infiltrate the Big Shell facility and eliminate a terrorist cell led by the former US president, who's both Raiden's adoptive father and a clone of the legendary war hero Big Boss. And after saying all of that, I'm starting to wonder if I'm the one who's dreaming. Inexplicable irregularities soon begin to appear in what should be a straightforward mission. Objectives that make no sense, people who know things that they shouldn't, and bizarre rants from his commanding officer eventually make Raiden start to question how much of this mission, or even his own reality, are actually real. Is his girlfriend actually his girlfriend? Is this entire mission nothing more than a simulation? And worst of all, even if everything is just a lie, can can he afford to stop fighting? Real or not, we should probably get the colonel those scissors, just in case. Number 5. Driver San Francisco the Driver series is famous for its exotic locales and globetrotting adventures, but it seems that there may be something in the water in San Francisco because that's when things got weird. Driver San Francisco begins in dramatic fashion. In pursuit of his nemesis, Charles Jericho, John Tanner suffers a horrific car crash and sends him to the hospital in a coma. He seemingly awakes none the worse for wear, but soon starts hearing voices and discovers that he now has the ability to shift. Not just shift gears, that is, but to jump into the bodies of other people and assume their identity. It's an odd bit of supernatural mumbo-jumbo in a series that hasn't really trafficked in such things before, but as Tanner begins to connect the dots of Jericho's plan, the player can figure out the truth of what's really going on. Tanner never actually woke up from his coma, and the whole game has been playing out inside of his own mind, and was shaped by his own broken memories and overheard snippets of news broadcasts that slipped through his subconscious. Proving that you can't keep a good man down, Tanner escapes from his coma, having cracked a secret behind Jericho's latest scheme, though it remains to be determined whether dreams are admissible as evidence in court. Number 4, Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X, everyone's favourite sports simulator with an RPG side game, is one of the most popular entries in Square Enix's highly regarded franchise for its well-written characters, dynamic gameplay, beautiful setting, and of course, Blitzball. The story begins when Tidus, a renowned player of the aquatic sport, and denizen of the technological metropolis Zanakand, is forced to flee his home during an attack by a giant whale creature called Sin. Tidus is swept out to sea and washes up on the shores of the island of the Set, where he quickly befriends the locals only to be told that Xanakand was supposedly destroyed centuries ago. Tidus volunteers to become a guardian to the summoner Yuna on her pilgrimage to free the world from sin, but in typical Final Fantasy fashion, things only get weirder when the truth is revealed. The Xanakand where Tidus lived is actually a project of the faith, human souls locked in an eternal slumber whose dreams manifest in physical form. This, of course, means that Tidus himself is a product of the same dream. Should the party's mission succeed and the sin be destroyed, the dreaming souls would be set free, the dreams would come to an end, and Tidus would disappear forever. Or at least until the sequel. Number 3. Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box Professor Layton and Indiana Jones have rather a lot in common. They both wear very nice hats, they both make me think that nobody knows what an archaeologist actually does for a living, and they've both had encounters with boxes that were better left unopened. In his sophomore outing, the good-natured professor and his apprentice Luke seek answers on the mystery of the Elysian box, an artifact that is said to take the life of anybody who dares to look inside. To find the truth, Layton and Luke travel to Fulsense, a mining town that seems eerily unchanged from the pictures of its 50-year-old 
controlled past. Through the course of their investigation into the town and its people, Leighton and Luke discover the truth. The mines beneath Folsense released a powerful hallucinogenic gas that causes people to see and hear anything suggested to them as real, and they were merely hallucinating the appearance of Folsense based on photographs they have seen before. The box contained a dose of this gas that caused anyone who knew the legend to die, because they believed that they would. Ah yes, elementary. The real mystery here is why people keep opening the box that kills anyone who opens it. I mean, who would be that stupid? Unless there's something really good in there. Perhaps a quick peek wouldn't hurt. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Link, everyone's favourite pointy-eared, green-clad hero, has had so many epic adventures at this point in his career that it's no surprise that he would start dreaming about them too. But what is a surprise is when he finds himself caught up in someone else's dream instead. Link's awakening begins after another successful quest to rescue Princess Zelda, which I assume is just an average Thursday afternoon for Link at this point. When our hero sets out to do a bit of sailing but runs afoul in a bad storm and wakes up on the shore of Koholint Island. If he wants to return home, Link is told he will have to seek out eight magical instruments and use them to awaken the legendary windfish who sleeps in a giant egg. During this quest, Link eventually learns the truth. The whole island is nothing more than a figment of the windfish's dreaming mind, and awakening the windfish means destroying Koholint. Interestingly, this twist comes not at the end of the game, as one might expect, but midway through, giving players ample time to weigh the potential consequences of their actions before they have to follow through. How's that for a rude awakening? And number one, drawn to life the next chapter. The early years of the Nintendo DS were a wild west of odd ideas and wacky gimmicks, as developers tried to figure out exactly what to make of the dual screen handheld's unique features. One of these ideas was Drawn to Life, a simple but fun platformer that gave players the power to draw their own characters, items, and stage features using the touchscreen. It earned awards and acclaim for its innovation, and two years later a sequel was released that took things in a different direction. Drawn to Life the next chapter starts off on a strange note. Our asking the players to describe certain things about that day. Things progress normally from there, exploring levels and rescuing cute little rabbit-like people, until the ending when everything fades to black and the events of that day are again recounted, ending with a reveal that the entire story took place within the mind of a boy named Mike as he recovers in a hospital after a car accident that killed his parents. To call it a shocking twist doesn't do justice to how incredibly dark and out of left field this ending is, especially considering how sunny the first game was, we can only wonder what kind of macabre twists and turns are lurking in Drawn to Life Spongebob Squarepants edition.